Jirel Software may well be in the running for my favourite developer on the ZX Spectrum. Not necessarily because all of the games were absolutely perfect, but because they consistently went down two different lines of thought. Either make something so ambitious the Spectrum struggles to understand why you hate it so much, or create something that no one else has even thought of yet. A few games fall into both of these categories, and Thanatos is the perfect example of this. How I've never come across this game until now, I don't know. But if you told me back in 1986 that there was a game where you played as a dragon, flying across landscapes, setting fire to things, rescuing sorceresses and eating witches, well, I probably wouldn't have said anything of worth because I was three years old, but I would definitely have blown a spit bubble. The first thing that really stands out here is the art direction and the animation. There are so many good choices made here that I actually did an internal, oh wow, wow. when I first booted it up. The dragon in particular is uncannily well animated for a game of this age, from flying to walking to moving its head in different directions as it burps barbecue into the faces of hapless enemies. It looks incredible! And coupled with the game's clever choice of everything being cast in the dark blue hue of night, colour clash is kept down to a bare minimum. It also, for a game that is completely 2D, feels much larger than it is thanks to the perspective shifts of items moving from the foreground to the background. Truly, I can't think of many games that look this good on the ZX Spectrum, and that's why I've been harping on about it for the entirety of this review so far, because aside from the sections where the game moves like a slideshow, there's absolutely nothing bad I can say about any of it. So let's move on to saying bad things about everything else. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not all bad, but what's the point of talking about a game if you can't point at it and laugh and say, Ugh, look at you, gross. So let's do that for a bit. The basic gameplay of Thanatos is moving from left to right, ensuring you do a few key things at key points along the way. Hilariously, and also actually usefully, the inlay doesn't just give you a brief idea of what you should do, it literally spells out the entire game for you. Fly to the right till you get to a castle, then land and walk up to the castle gate. Use flame from close range to burn down gate. If you run out of flame, go back and find a witch tied between two stakes and eat her. Just walk up to her slowly. This will refill your energy shown by glass on the bottom right of the screen. In the first castle, land near the girl who will be colored green and will be waving with both arms and allow her to climb onto your neck, i.e. just land nearby and wait. Fly onto the next castle. When you find the Book of Spells, land and let the girl collect them. Fly to the last castle where you will find the cauldron in which the girl can cast her spell. Honestly, if every ZX Spectrum game was this free and easy with its instructions, my life would have been so much easier. Having the game fully laid out for you doesn't make things too easy though, and after multiple attempts on the easiest difficulty setting, I had to resort to save states just to get through the entire thing. There are reasons for this, one being that the instructions miss out a vital bit of information, but we'll get to that. My first issue was simply trying to deal with the number of enemies on screen. Stopping off to kill these humans, the size of this giant lumbering dragon sprite really doesn't allow you to avoid much of anything. So it was quite a nice surprise when I found that I could just ignore 90% of what the game was throwing at me by simply flying over it. That's not ideal. Spending most of your time in-game pushing your speed up to maximum and holding up is probably not something you'd consider particularly fun. Although, there is some level of exhilaration circling through the bloodstream as you zoom through the air. Call it the child within, simply being excited that I can finally be a dragon. You can't do this with all enemies. There are a few things here that will try to throw you off. We'll call these things bees, spiders, and dragons, because that's exactly what they are. The bees aren't too much of a hassle. You simply do a mouth fart in their general direction and they'll burst. The dragon is a little tougher, mostly because of the angle he'll attack from. I found it easier to just sit down and set his tummy on fire while he flew past. Not exactly a dragon fight worthy of the big screen, but when something works, you've just got to roll with it. The spiders are a slightly different beast, literally. You'll find these in caves and they've got a nasty habit of always being in the way. Move too fast and you won't be able to breathe fire quickly enough to take them out. They also love to knock the sorceress off your back and then try and eat her, so you've got a couple of options. You can either go really slowly like a boring bastard, or you can go as fast as you can while constantly moving up and down, like a cool person, like me, rose-tinted spectrum. 
This only has a success rate of about 40%, but it's better than being a massive fanny and pumping the brakes. So far, so easy. And to be fair, it is quite easy up until you come across two specific things. The first, if we jump back to the instructions, is this. If you run out of flame, go back and find a witch tied between two stakes and eat her. Just walk up to her slowly. Each of the gates you come across on your journey, of which there are three, need to be burned down. And they use up pretty much an entire belly's worth of curry before they'll eventually fall. Would it be pedantic of me to point out that you are a flying dragon and the whole concept of doors is not something you really should have to trouble yourself with? It is what it is. Once you've run out of fire, you need to go and find a witch. The witches, it seems, don't appear until you've completely run out of juice, so you need to backtrack. At no point do the instructions mention that the witches are guarded by a knight on horseback. Nor does it tell you that you have to deal with the knight before the dragon can eat the witch. Nor does it tell you that these knights will decimate you in a couple of hits. This had me baffled for ages, until at one point I accidentally grabbed the knight off his horse and the witch was suddenly edible. So confused by this was I, that the next time I came across a witch, I still had no idea what to do because I hadn't even noticed I killed the knight. Thanatos gives you the ability to pick up certain things if you get close to them, such as rocks, but there's never really any need to do this because you're either flying past everything or you're setting them on fire. The knight will only charge at you if you land near a witch, and you'd only land near a witch if you've run out of flame, and you'd only think to pick up the knight off his horse if it specifically said you could do this in the instructions, which it does not! This is the problem with instructions that seem to provide you with every single bit of information. If it accidentally misses a little bit of that information, you think you've gone mental. I thought I'd gone mental! With the knight out of the way, thank god, you can eat the witch exactly how the instructions tell you to, and you can be on your merry way. This leads me to the last problem, and it specifically ties in with the final castle of the game. It's horrible. Getting there is an ordeal in itself, the run up to the castle gate features an incredibly long cave full of annoying spiders that keep knocking the sorceress to the floor. And then, when you're through to the other side, you've got to deal with of all bloody things, an army of cougars. Not the Carol Vorderman kind, but the cat kind. There are problems here. The cougars can come from either side, forwards or backwards, and it seems there's no rhyme or reason to that. If they attack from the back, you are just dead. There's no two ways about it. You won't be able to turn around in time to either attack or get away, and they do so much damage that you'll pop like a balloon. If they attack from the front, you've got more of a chance, but the hitboxes in this game aren't exactly precise, so it took me multiple attempts just with save states to even take them out. I can't fathom how annoying it would be to reach this point in the game only to be broken by wonky hit detection or RNGesus. Once you've fought these arseholes, they thankfully don't respawn, but you do have to deal with the final gate, which you now won't have the puff to burn down. And where's the nearest witch? All the way back through this bastard cave full of bastard spiders. What an incredibly tedious end to an exciting journey. I'll stop complaining now though, because even though the last sections of this game made me wish I'd never been born, Thanatos still impresses. I love the way it looks, I love the way it's supposed to feel, even though the ZX Spectrum can't quite do it justice. I love the concept, I love the unfolding story as you move from left to right, taking on whatever comes with it. I love the idea of recharging health by simply stopping and taking a break. I love this. I love this game, even though I've spent 90% of my time complaining about it because that's just what I'm like. Do I recommend you check out Thanatos? Of course. It's a game with an uncompromising attitude toward its own idea. It's big, it's bold, it's challenging, and I want to finish this sentence by saying, just like a dragon, because that would be such an easy way to sign off this review. Oh my god, you'd all say, this guy just simulated me to death. I'm absolutely shook. But I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to end this review without even finishing the sentence. How do you like them apples?